Okay, so I'm, this is the video. It's very bare bones, the equation of a plane. So the Cartesian, the Cartesian equation of a plane is the equation ax plus by plus cc equals d. And so I'd like you to go to GeoGebra, type ax plus by plus cz equals d, a, b, c, and d will be the, the sliders, hit plane, just, you'll see that it's a big plane, like the wall, or a tabletop, or the floor. Um, if, the little thing, um, if, if d equals zero, then the plane um, passes through the origin. Um, the origin, just a, a, you know, a, a, you know, just a fun fact. Because obviously, a solution for the equation of ax plus by plus c d equals zero is zero zero zero. Uh, let's see. So we want to talk about the derivation of uh, the derivative. How do we get this formula? Well, we're going to start with vectors. So the first thing is we know that uh, a, a plane. We were looking. What makes a line unique? A line is unique if you have two points. So what makes a plane unique? If you have three points, so um, a plane, so given three points, given three points, um, a unique plane um, passes. Uh, I apologize, given three non-collinear points, um, the unique plane will pass through. And so um, what I want you to do is go back to GeoGebra, and I want you to put the following three points into GeoGebra. Point A is 1, 1, 1. Um, point B is negative 1, 1, 0. And in C, I'd like you to do 2, 0, 3. Once again, you're going to do GeoGebra, uh, GeoGebra, like dot com slash 3D. And you're going to plot these three points. And then on the calculator part, or the tools part, you're going to see like a plane through three points. And you can see that given three points, you get a unique plane. Okay, now, what's going on? So the question is, how do we, how do we write the equation? Well, let's start, we're going to start with vectors. Because every, once we have everything, vectors makes life easier. So we have this plane. We have points A, B, and C. We need A, B, and C. We, we need three points. So the idea is um, with the plane, it's going to be an equation, and it's R equals, and let's think about this. Well, the first thing is, like plotting any points, we start the origin. And the first thing is, the first vector is getting to A. We're getting to A. So that's the first thing. So we'll call this vector A. So it's A plus now, the next thing you're going to see in the book is that we have two vectors. The first thing is AB and AC. And the question is, can these two vectors get us to every location? Right now, let's take a little detour to a math that we don't need. So let's, I'm going to, little side, side diversion. So let's go back. So for example, we saw the, we saw the point like 5i plus 3j. Now, what, is, what does that mean? We said, oh, that's a vector, and it's 5a plus 3j. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, if you think about it, it's really, it's really a big deal, because this was five times, and let's go with two space, knowing that we can translate two space into three space. And so the idea is, this actually was one zero, and this was three times zero one. And the claim, we didn't talk about it, but the claim is that any combination of i and 
and J will get us to any point on the real plane, like any number we wanted to. Any number, how about like, you know, like vector negative eight, you know, I don't know, 15. Well, you'd say, okay, Mr. Adler, we'll take negative eight in the I direction and add it to 15 in the J direction. Anything, or crazy numbers, like, I don't know, like, you know, E squared and radical six. And you say, okay, Mr. Adler, no problem. E squared in the I direction plus radical six in the J direction. So this gets, and this, sorry, R2 is a fancy way of taking XY, the, the XY plane. Now, this is known as a basis. Because any combination will get us to any point in, in the real plane. The question is, do I have to use one zero and zero one. For example, I, let's say I didn't have I and J, right? Let's say that, right? Let's say my basis was, or I claim that, let's call this, uh, have a one, two, and three, five. Can a, a linear combination of one, let's call this, let's call this, um, I don't know, M and N. This is the M vector, this is the N vector. And the question is, can any combination of the M and N vector also get me to R2? Right, do I have to use, I mean, it's the easiest, it's how we graph points, but do I have to use, can I use these two? What about, now the answer is yeah. Now I'm gonna give you, how about this one? How about we use like P and Q? How about two, three, and four, six? Can you think of why this linear combination would not work? And so the answer, so the answer is, if, if I want you to think about that. But the idea is no, I don't have to use my unit vectors to get me everywhere. I can use other vectors. This one works. I can actually get to any point using something times one, two, plus something times three, five, that will also get me everywhere. This one doesn't work, and I'd like you to think about it. It's outside the scope of this class, but something to think about. So, let's come back to my example here. Let's come back. So, the idea is, what we see is, as long as you have two vectors that are not parallel, you should have figured that out, you can actually use those factors to get anywhere on the plane. So therefore, the given points A, B, and C, the equation of the plane is R is equal to A, getting to the plane, some linear combination of the first vector plus a multiple of a non-parallel vector. And this is the equation of the plane. So, so, Let's write the vector equation of the uh, F. Okay. let's figure out the vector equation of the example I gave you. So where I said that a is equal to one one one. Oh no, a is a, a is point one one one. B is negative one one zero, and C is two. Zero, three. Well, once first of all, I have to get on the plane. So it's um, one, one, one. Now I need my two vectors to get me anywhere on the plane. So let's find vector AB. Well, mm, let me get some, I'm sorry, let me get some space over here. Let's see, so AB, Let's see, the journey from one to negative one, negative two, the journey from one to one is zero, and the journey from one to zero is negative one. So it's negative two, zero, negative one, S. You can put the S on the front either side. Then I need another vector, right? You know, one way is good, but I need another way. 
in the same yeah and then let's find these uh, AC let's see one to two that's one one to zero that's negative one one to three that's two and so we have one negative one two t and so this is the equation the factor equation of the plane that contains these points. And you can put this in, good. Now, what I'd like you to do is, yeah. So you're like, fine, this is the vector equation. The problem is, how do I get the Cartesian? Because what you did before is I asked you to put the three points in GeoGebra, 3D. I asked you to, you know, get the plane that passes through them, and you didn't get this answer. They gave, they gave you an answer of the Cartesian. How do we get that? Well, I'm going to teach you a tedious way now. You might actually like this better, and then I'm going to show you something a little more quick. So let's take a look at this. Well, we know that this generate is equal to all the points, x, y, and z. So we have three equations. Let's set them up. So we have 1 minus 2s plus t equals x. We have 1 plus 0s minus t equals y, and we have 1 minus s plus 2t equals z. Now, your first thing you might say, Mr. Adler, um, how do we have, we have three equations and five unknowns, but I'm not looking to eliminate my x, y, and z. So technically, technically, I only have like two unknowns. So that's easy. So what we're going to do is first, Let's eliminate the t. So we can add these two together, and we get 2 minus 2s is equal to x plus y. Now I'm going to need to eliminate the t, so I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2. So let's rewrite this. 2 plus 0s minus 2t equals 2y. The second equation stays the same. I have 1 minus s plus 2t equals z. Add them together, add them together, and I have 3 um, minus s equals 2y plus z. Let's write that over here. 3 minus s equals 2y plus z. Okay, now I want to get rid of my s's. Well, that's easy. Just first of all, let's multiply, let's multiply the second equation by 2. So we have 6 minus 2s equals 4y plus 2z. <coughs> okay, I'm going to draw a line through here because I don't want to see it. And now, because, how do we get rid of things that are the same? We subtract. So, so 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Negative 2s minus itself is 0. And we have x. y minus 4y is minus 3y minus 2z. And like from GeoGebra, this is the Cartesian equation of the plane with, which passes through these three points. What I'd like you to do now is, let's see, g, h, sorry, h. What I'd like you to do now is try this one. I'm going to try. I'm running out of, I need to get a new pen, sorry. Try. So I want you to find the Cartesian equation of the plane that passes through 2, 1, negative 1. B is 0, negative 2, 0. And C is 1, negative 1, 2. And the answer is, when you figure it out on your own, it's negative 7x plus 5y plus z equals negative 10. Good. Good. Okay. So let's move on. Now, you saw me say enough with the, with the uh, simultaneous equations, Mr. Adler. Yeah. So let's come up with it, something else. Let's look at another approach. Let's use the idea of vectors to help us come up with a faster method. So the idea was, 
the uh, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at a a plane. Imagine it's a tabletop top, right? And I have a point A, right? And what I can do, if you think about it, there's a lot of points. There's a lot of vectors that come from A. Here's you know vector one. Here's another vector. 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 The question is, what do all these vectors have in common? What do all these vectors have in common? Well, if you think about it, if I take this marker, all of these vectors are perpendicular to this vector. If I take this pen and put it on the board, all these vectors I just drew are perpendicular to this vector, right? So the question is, and I'll make a better picture, they're all perpendicular to the same vector, right? All perpendicular to the same vector. This vector is called the normal. And it's, per it's perpendicular to all the vectors on this plane. So you say, okay, but how do I find the direction vector of, of this vector? How do I know that? Well, remember, remember, we have three points. This might have been A, but this was B, and this was C. And we saw using the cross product of two vectors, we can find the perpendicular vector. So remember, this is equal to AB cross AC is the normal. We call it N. Next. Well, what's the relationship between two vectors that are perpendicular? Their dot product is zero. So we have this vector, and so that's the idea. So that we're going to so the normal times, like, let's call it vector xa is equal to zero. What do I mean by xa? I mean like a variable and a, a, okay, and because what I started with is that a goes to any vector. So let's get this down. So let's see. So let's get, let's go from our original example. Sorry. Let's get the points back up there and let's start over again. So the original points are one, 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 Negative one, one, zero, two, zero, three. Here's A, here's B, here's C. So um, the idea is that we have AB and we have AC. We want to find the normal. Well, we know we can do that by taking the cross product. So we have I, J, K. What was A, B? Well, I, we have it in our notes. Negative 2, 0, negative 1. And what was A, C? That was 1, negative 1, 2. I'm going to do the uh, that method. So let's rewrite this as I. Negative 2, 1, j, 0, negative 1. Let's see, we have 0, i, minus j, plus 2, k, minus negative 4, j, plus i, um, minus 0, k. That's equal to, let's say we have minus i, we have plus 3j, and we have plus 2k. Okay. Next, we know that this, this vector, this is the normal, and we know it's perpendicular to any vector. Well, I'm going to say that I'm going to imagine that I know what A is, right? I know that A is a 1, 1, 1, 
But I'm saying that A to any point is perpendicular. So this is A, let's call it P. AP is perpendicular to the normal. So that means vector AP, which is X minus one, Y minus one, Z minus one, is perpendicular. That means it's the dot product is equal to zero. That's kind of cool, and it's much faster. So we have negative x plus one plus three y minus three plus two z minus two equals zero. We have negative x plus three y plus two z is equal to, let's see, negative four, it's four, and if we want to manipulate this, and we're done. If we want to manipulate this to look like the other one, it's simply x minus 3y minus 2z equals negative 4. And that's the fast way of finding the equation of a plane. Let's try the example I asked you to do. So before, I, let's try another one. Let's see. So let's go to another example. Let's see. And I suggest you try and said A was 2, 1, negative 1. B was negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0. And point C was 1, negative 1, 2. Okay. So you're saying, I want to do the cross. I know the, I, and I know the answer is negative 7x plus 5y plus the c equals negative 10. Okay, so let's figure this out. Well, I know AB is, let's see, 2 to 0, negative 2, 1 to negative 2, negative 3, negative 1 to 0, 1. And I know that AC is, let's see, 2 to 1 is negative 1. 1 to negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 to 2 is positive 3. Well, let's set this up. Let's find the normal. Find the normal to the plane, to this plane. So let's do i, j, k. Negative 2, negative 3, 1. Negative 1, negative 2, 3. I'm going to do the, the odd jack method because I like that. Let's see, i, let's see, negative 9 minus negative 2 is negative 7 minus j plus some k. So let's see, the j, take out the middle, take out the top, uh, take out the top. So we have negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. And then we have, take out, the, take out the K, take out the last row, take out the top row. We have 4 minus 3 is 1. So that's the normal. Now, let's dot that with any points of the factor of A to any point. So let's see. X, so let's call it, so once again, we have our plane, we have point A going to anything, right? So this is x minus 2 over y minus 1 over z plus 1 dotted with negative 7, 5, 1. This equals 0. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. We get the final answer, we get negative 7x plus 14 plus 5y minus 5 plus z plus 1 equals 0. Negative 7x plus 5y plus z is equal to, uh, let's see, 15 minus 5 is 10, negative 10. That's the answer. Um, the book does something a little different. They say 
They say, we know that you have A, and we know A, which is 2, 1, negative 1, and you know how you have this, this um, unknown point, X, Y, Z. What the book does, and I'm not a big fan of it, but you can do it. What the book does is they say, fine, A, N, is equal to, like, P, N. So the book says, the book does negative 2, 1, 1. No, 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 I'm sorry. P is our unknown, right? A is our known. So they say, I apologize. They say, you know what? So then they say, they say, you know, PZ is equal to AZ. So they're like, fine. X, Y, Z dotted with negative 7, 5, 1 is equal to the numbers 2, 1, negative 1 dotted with negative 7, 5, 1. I start off with everything on the right, left, move the numbers to the right. The books say, you know what, just cross, just dot the normal with the variables, and that's equal to the normal with the known points. You get the same answer. Negative 7x, positive 5y plus z is equal to 14, negative 15 plus 5, negative 10. And that's basically a couple of things before we go. We're done. Um, you're just going to practice these. Um, first of all, number of, of nifty things, things you're seeing here. I'm going to erase this. Um, I'll just go on. First of all, um, the coefficients. The coefficients of um, the equation of the plane um, are the components of the normal. And that's kind of cool if you think about it. If you have AX plus BY plus C, Z equals D on any plane, this, this normal has a direction vector of A, B, C. That's kind of cool. This is, that's the normal. And so that helps you, like, you may think, oh my God, what are I doing? You're like, oh, here's the equation. I have the normal. We're going to be needing the normal a lot. What else? Um, Let's just go over, just let me take you through the homework quickly. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, if you, if you, one, if you're given, if you're given three points, you have to find the equation of the plane. That's basic. Uh, homework, uh, what else? Um, if you're given four points, First, use three to find the equation of the plane, and then, then plug the fourth in into the equation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if the fourth point fits in the equation, it's like. It's like my asking you, is this point on this line? You're like, okay, it's an X and a Y, stick it in the equation. Same thing. You're going to take that fourth point and stick it in the equation. Uh, third thing. Um, um, oh, I, I, the third thing was, was about how they split up the normal, they cross, they dotted it with, the, with the, the X, Y, Z, and then on the right side, they dotted it with the, with the point that you had. I do it a little differently, but you can see in the book how they did it. Uh, the last thing, um, number three, if you, you know, if you have two vectors, so for example, if they give you the equation of the plane in vector form, you're like, well, I have a point and I have two vectors, cross the two vectors, you know, cross, cross the vectors to get the normal. Um, and that's it. And then, yeah, so you're going to do all the exercises 
Yeah, and I'll put the homework on. Good.